What I'm gonna do is show you guys all of the elements of my setup, hopefully to give you a little bit of inspiration for what you can do with your own. Sounds good to you, sounds good to me. Cool. This video is also sponsored by Skillshare, but more on that a little bit later. Let's start with the most important part of my desk setup, the desk itself. This has evolved over the years from a desk with drawers to a desk with shelves to a desk with four legs into, into my favorite iteration yet, a standing desk. A few months ago, my homies over at FlexiSpot sent me their EN1 series height adjustable standing desk frame. I paired it with the IKEA desktop that used to have the four legs attached to it and it was relatively easy to set up. I just assembled the frame and put this tabletop on it. Now with the press of a button, I can lower or raise the desk to where I see fit and with the EN1 series, I can not only do that, but I can also set three different height presets. My current sitting position is 29, and then I have my standing position at 42, and then I have my third preset at near the desk's max height, so it can make it easier for cable management, which I'll show you in a bit. I absolutely love this desk. And I'll leave a discount code and links to this and everything that I talk about today down in the description. And in terms of what I'm sitting on, I got myself this Herman Miller-esque uh, chair right here. It's not the most comfortable chair in the world, but then again, I don't really want the most comfortable chair in the world because I don't want to be sitting all the time, hence the standing desk and how dope that is. I opted for the low profile and no armrests so that when I record footage and when you see me on camera, you don't see any part of the chair itself. I chose this Ikea tabletop because of its price, its size, and its versatility. I wanted to be able to mount all of my monitors and peripherals to it, leaving me as much space as possible on the desk desk itself. Let's actually go ahead and take a look at all of what is attached to this desk. Let's start with this, my, my Behringer audio interface. This is a fantastic interface that connects to my microphone and external speakers. It supports numerous mics. If I wanted to, I could like start a whole podcast with this joint, but not yet. Not yet. I've got it attached to the underside of the desk with a whole lot of 3M double-sided tape. Also up front, we've got this 90 watt USB power hub. This plugs directly into my outlet and can fast charge up to 60 watts via USB-C. I use it to charge my iPhone, iPad, a portable power brick, Bluetooth speaker, pretty much anything. It can even charge my MacBook Air. I love, love, love this thing. And around back, I have an Ethernet network splitter. Since I don't have an Ethernet port or router near my desk itself, I have the splitter attached to a long Ethernet cord over to my router, which is attached itself to an even longer Ethernet cord I have snaking across the ceiling to the modem in my living room. This allows me to get a stable internet connection for streams. Having the splitter also lets me plug in up to four devices that can benefit from the Ethernet connection as well, like my computer, my Nintendo Switch, and PlayStation 5 all at once. No need for Wi-Fi, no worries about lag, it's, it's great. And attached to the top side of the desk here, we've got on the left-hand side, my webcam. Well, it's not really a conventional webcam, I would say. I use a Panasonic Lumix G7 as a web camera. This is a fantastic camera that doubles as my B camera when I record regular videos. It's attached to this light stand mount with a little swivel ball head attachment up top so I can like adjust the angle of the camera when I need to. I coiled the AC adapter and HDMI wires down the stand itself and then hit the excess wires on the rear underside of the desk. The camera then plugs into an Elgato Camlink 4 4K, which plugs into my Thunderbolt 3 dock, which then plugs into my computer to allow me to use the camera as a webcam when I go live. The quality of the image far exceeds anything I could get out of a regular webcam, so I am absolutely in love with it. Next up, surrounding my monitors, we have these two LED lights by Newer. These are great lights, also attached via light stand mounts and cable managed as well under the desk into the power surge I have mounted on the underside of my desk. I actually plan on adding some smart adapters to these lights so I can turn them off and on with Siri to get everything up and running even more seamlessly. Now let's get to these monitors. I absolutely love them. They are 27 inch Dell 4K monitors. I'll leave the model number and all that stuff below that I actually just purchased over the holiday. Their productivity monitors are not gaming monitors, but they do support AMD FreeSync and have fantastic colors and viewing angles. I don't need like the top of the line gaming monitor. Honestly, my gaming experience on these monitors have been fantastic. Here I also have all the cables from the monitors in these little sleeves that snake the cords under the table where they are nicely wound up and cable managed as well. Both 
both displays are plugged directly into my computer, which I feel it's about time I talked about my computer. This is also brand new to my setup. It's the M1 Mac mini with 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of internal storage. This along with my MacBook Air has completely replaced my maxed out 16 inch MacBook Pro with the 5600 M processor that I just bought back in like June. While that computer was an absolute beast in its own right, these computers are nearly as powerful and honestly not noticeably slower than my experience with that Intel Mac. So I was able to purchase both of these M1 Macs and sell my used 16 inch Intel MacBook Pro and walk away with an extra $1,000 in my pocket. Seriously, the price for the performance that you get with these Macs are outstanding. I, and I honestly don't know when I would need to upgrade as long as my workflow doesn't really get any more intense. I should have these joints for years years with no issues. Now I'm not currently a PC gamer, so it has all the power I need to edit 4K video, edit photos, uh, stream and record music. Uh, speaking of my music, uh, be sure to follow me over on Spotify, Apple Music or wherever you stream. I've got new music coming, I got music there that you can definitely check out. Now I honestly wouldn't recommend any computers other than the M1 MacBook Air or the Mac Mini if you already have like a keyboard, a mouse or a screen to anyone that's like trying to start up a YouTube channel. I think they're just perfect for it. And if you're a creative like me and wanna learn how to edit videos on Final Cut like I do, I definitely recommend checking out the video editing with Final Cut Pro from beginner to YouTuber class by Ali Abdal over on Skillshare. On Skillshare, you're like a part of a community with literally thousands of classes to learn new skills and get creative. Ali Abdal's class is a fantastic three plus hours and it'll teach you everything that you need to know from transitions to cuts to, to color grading and more. I actually learned a few time-saving techniques myself and, and shortcuts. What's dope is that you can join for less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. And also my first 1,000 subscribers to use the link down below will get a completely free trial of the premium membership too. It's a really, really great deal for a service with no ads. It's always introducing new premium classes and big shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring this portion of the video. Now, while my Mac mini has a lot of ports to stream the way I do, I needed a bit more. So that's where my Cow Digit Thunderbolt 3 adapter comes in. This has been a great device that allows me to daisy chain external Thunderbolt storage. It has an SD card reader, which I use all the time, headphone and microphone jacks, a, a ton of USB-C and A connectivity options, and a display board for an external display as well. It connects to to all of my peripherals in my setup from my audio interface to my cameras to one of my favorite peripherals, my Elgato Stream Deck XL. This joint allows me to set triggers for my stream that I can use to change angles and scenes. It can also be used for any number of actions outside of streaming like hotkeys for editing photos, videos, or, or triggering smart home products. I've got all my keys here with an image of Smash Ultimate characters. They all trigger something different and only I know what, which is just fun for me. In my setup, I use the basic keyboard and trackpad that Apple makes. Nothing really too special to see here. They've been reliable and so for now they'll do. In terms of the microphone for my setup, I use this Rode Anniversary mic I got a few years ago. Fantastic condenser microphone that I use when streaming and making music. It came with a handy dandy little pop filter and is on this weighted bass that I bought many, many moons ago. I actually plan on getting an articulating arm mic for this though so that I can add even more space to my desk. Uh, the headphones I use here are long overdue for an upgrade, but they're fantastic. They are the original Audio-Technica M50s recommended by MKBHD. Uh, shouts out to him. Standing to the right and left of my desk are my two studio monitors that I placed on their own stands to give my desk even more space. I've had these for many years as well. I'm sure there are better studio monitors out available now, but I'm like in no rush to upgrade. They're great. I've got the cables for these wrapped up in their sleeves and coiled nicely as well under my desk into that their surge protector. That surge protector along with my Mac Mini and Thunderbolt 3 dock, by the way, are all plugged into a CyberPower battery backed up surge protector. This will save my ass in the rare case when we get a blackout or, or my circuit breaker trips while I'm in the middle of a game or, or rendering a video or transferring a file. Because if the power goes kaput at that moment, it has the potential to break your console, hard drive, or even your computer. This battery backup will allow me enough time to stop whatever I was doing safely and turn off my console and computer. It, it can also double as a charger for your phone or a flashlight if there's like an extended blackout that lasts a few hours or even days. It is a really, really clutch device that you don't know you need it until you actually need it and you're grateful that you have it when you do. So yeah, 
Oh wait, I didn't even mention my Nintendo Switch, which of course I keep a dock on my desk and, and, and in my setup to stream with at all times. I can also easily swap this out from a PlayStation 5 if I choose to, which currently is attached to the bit screen. If you wanna see some of the latest games that I've added to my Nintendo Switch collection, definitely check out this video here and check out this video that YouTube is recommending to you. I, I think you'll like it. I'm pretty sure you will. Don't forget to subscribe and remember to stay crazy.